Hey, we want to say thank you to our sponsors, Watchman Cigar, Red Hill Brewing, Crave Bath and Body, Level Up Logo. Um, listen, I don't know about you guys, but if, if I were to get a shirt made this week, it may be something like, I just got slapped by Will Smith. That would be a great <laughs> t-shirt if you wanted to have one made. And my man, Eric, at Level Up Logo, at leveluplogo.com, can make that shirt for you. And, you know, send it to Chris Rock. It'd be great. Um, so if you're looking for t-shirts, hats, anything uh, this festive spring slash summer slash uh, pollen apocrypha, um, he can hook you up. So check out my man, Eric, at leveluplogo.com. Thank you. Hey, hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast, where it's our take on life, liberty, the pursuit of gravy. While you, the listener, are invited to come up on the front porch, grab a beverage, and have a Benadryl. We've got a great show lined up for you, as always. But before we begin, let me go ahead and introduce you to our starting lineup. Of course, we have at the control deck, producer Brian. Hey, hey, hey. And monitoring the chats, the web, and his black, what is it, the black tank level? It is <laughs> Magic Man. Hey, everybody. How's it going? And the level's good, hey, by the way. The level is good. Has it ever gotten to a point where yeah. you're like, uh-oh, this is a problem? Not yet. Hopefully, uh, okay. we'll, we'll keep a good manage on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good to note. Uh, Producer Brian, where can our people find us on the socials? We're on uh, the internet at sfpradio.com that's where all of our social links are feel free to go over there leave, leave us a voicemail we'll interpret your dreams we'll solve mm -hmm. your problems uh we can place a pizza order for you maybe but i can't tell you when you'll get mm -hmm. it so go Absolutely there check not. that out uh we're at instagram at sfp radio we're on facebook at southern fried philosophy we're on youtube at mm -hmm. youtube.com slash southern fried philosophy uh twitter is sfp radio as well I think I've got them all. There's probably one I forgot. Yeah. Uh, well, our website. Go to our website, yeah. sfpradio.com. All the links and information is there. Also, if you would like to you know, help out the show, our Patreon link is there as well. Listen, we don't have a, a giant marketing budget. Our marketing budget is negative $10 right now. So, yikes. So, if you could just do us a favor, like, subscribe, rate, review the podcast, even if you hate it. Just give it a five star. You know, I've seen, you know, Amazon reviews that have four stars, uh, but then you go in and read them and there's like, you know, some bad ones. It's okay. Mm -hmm. You can leave a bad review, um, but give us, you know, some type of rating that will help us tremendously. Also spread the word. If you guys are digging what we're doing and you like it, please uh, help uh, support the show just by stealing somebody's phone, subscribing them to the podcast. They don't even have to know. We would really just appreciate that. Um, any new listeners would be fantastic. Uh, speaking of listeners, though, we have a new listener from Sweden. So we want to say, say shout out to Sweden. Uh, Magic Man, can you tell us some fun facts about Sweden? Hey, I'll be glad to. So the first thing, um, they almost bag for beg for trash. Um, yes, you heard me right. Beg for trash. Uh, thanks Why to a highly efficient waste. Ma waste. Uh, do what? I said, I've got a ton of it right here in this office. There's Popeye's bag. Uh, yeah, there's can, a McDonald's bag over there. And you can send it right there to them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that says thanks to a highly efficient waste management system in Sweden. The vast majority of this household waste is recycled. As a result, Sweden has a shortage of garbage, and this has resulted in Sweden asking, asking its Nordic neighbors, such as Norway, for their trash. As Sweden converts their energy into trash, this is a much-needed commodity. Huh. Yeah, that, that's an interesting one. Um, he, here's another one for, for all of us that are, uh, are married, both men and women. Uh -oh. Um, oh, okay. So one Swedish word can have multiple meanings, um, and okay. it all depends on... Um, what you're on about or even how you pronounce the word case in point is the word gift. Okay. So, okay. um, the base, see the, the word also can mean married, um, but it can also mean poison toxics. Toc <laughs> I can't talk tonight. Toxic venom <laughs> virus. 
to all depending on how you use the word gift uh mm. or the sweetest word for gift so yeah that's that's interesting there um <clears throat> and then we have uh, uh, this is actually probably kind of cool for those of, uh, of us that are um uh full-time RVers, I guess. Sweden has an unusual right oh. for its people um, that is called freedom to roam. It means that people have the right to access all public and private land that is not cultivated or oh. that is a garden attached to a house um, and can camp wherever they wish. It also confers the right to pick berries, flowers, and mushrooms without a permit. So basically, right. you can just if you want to go live off the land, you can just go live off the land and, and you won't get a knock on your door or your tent flat off or anybody's wherever. Anybody's land? Um, Pretty much, yeah. Private or pu- or Ooh. public, as long as it's not being cultivated. Uh, what's the gun control yeah. laws over there look like? <laughs> um, <laughs> sure, it's probably uh, no guns. I'm sure they they don't have that many guns. Oh, yeah, yeah. One um, of those things is necessary for the other to exist. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Can finally, you- I have. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. Finally, I have Sweden is famous for many inventions, most notably perhaps for dynamite, which oh. was invented by Alfred Noble in 1867. So I thought you were going to say the Swedish meatball. Swedish oh, yeah, meatball, and also also a furniture that has very difficult instructions to follow to assemble. Well done. Wow. <laughs> so Sweet. can we go back to the the waste issue? So. Is anybody sure. else thinking they've got like a Mr. Fusion from Back to the Future oh, where, they, where he got all the yeah. trash and he was able oh, to power the cool. DeLorean? Yeah, that make Making you nuclear one, power out of banana peels. You're right, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> good job, Swedish. Listen, I love I love America. I I do. It it's a great country. Uh, but we are lacking in so many things. <laughs> when we when we travel, we're like, oh wow, this is this sub this uh this train system is fantastic. Like, mm. why can't we get that? Or you know the the waste issue in Sweden. Like, we're dealing with so much crap. Why can't we do that? Um, mm. Mm, way to go, Sweden. Uh, I've always joked that if I retire and move to another country, that that'd probably be the country I go to. So, really. I don't know. The, you know, my, one of my favorite Muppets is the Swedish chef. Yeah, he's great. He's amazing. Oh, yes. He has oh. the real hands. You ever notice he's like, a, he's like, we don't have a puppet hand. It's an oh, actual yeah. dude's hands yeah. doing all this stuff. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> what he's a great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, all right. So I'm going to ask you guys, like I ask you every week, uh, how you be doing? Brought to you by Crave Bath and Body. Uh, we'll go with Magic Man. Uh, also, aka tornado magnet. Yeah, well, actually, fortunately, that that is not the case. Um, but yes, yesterday oh, was good. rather interesting. Uh, let me ask you all. So that system uh, evidently made its way east. Has it affected you all any in the Concord area? Um, um, well, I'll preface back by saying your tornado warning magnet man is what you are. <laughs> That's probably okay. better. Uh, we had we had a ton of rain today. Uh, we yeah. had some wind last night, but that was that was the extent of it. Just a bunch of rain. Okay, well that's good. Well, I'll give you a little bit of a story of uh, how it was for us. So yesterday morning, uh, I get about six o'clock central and uh, head out. And I'm like, okay, well I'm going to go and start prepping. So I was thinking, okay, what we want to do is make it to where we can bug out quickly if anything, mm-hmm. like we get a tornado warning or anything. Um, so I proceeded to go outside and hook disconnected all of the utilities except for power. So we were running, I put water in our freshwater tank. Um, so we were completely using onboard systems, uh, other than power. Um, I even went as far as hooking up the truck, um, to the hitch, um, <laughs> or hitching up to the truck and, um, removing the chalks and everything and getting everything. You know, th- so that basically the way we had it, we had all the slides pulled in and oh. we had it to where all we would need to do is go out, lift up the leveling jacks and go. So it will disconnect the power and then, and go. Was the truck running? So, you sleep uh, it on? <laughs> yeah. I just left it on the whole day. <laughs> no. Oh no, but, we're out of gas. So, we can't go. Yeah. So, you know, proceeded to work. And uh, right as I got done with work, that's when it hit, you know, sky turned black, uh, west of here, uh, winds were going like crazy. We were buffeting, um, 
but uh, we had a tornado warning, but it was north of us. It was actually north of Vicksburg. We're south, just south of Vicksburg, where we're at. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, we were watching Weather Nation, keeping an eye on the, the radars, and um, you know it, that. So it was. It was kind of like a lot of prep. Um, but not a whole lot of climax. And in that kind of situation, I was kind of glad for that. So, mm. yeah. Boy, that, that can relate to a lot of things. <clears throat> <I'm just saying. laughs> a lot of building. Yeah. Mm. Let you all use your imagination on that one. But a lot of prep, very low climax. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Well, where, where are you guys this week? We are just south of Vicksburg, Mississippi. Um, Mississippi. And then, uh, right. yep. Just south of so we went basically from the north eastern corner down to the uh central western part of the state. I mean we're we're literally right off well, not right off the river. There's like a, a road and a airport, small airport between us and the river, but Mississippi mm-hmm. River. Um but yeah, we were there. But we did get to visit the uh Vicksburg National Military Park, which is you know where they had a, a major battle here in, in Vicksburg. That was very interesting, especially the way they have signs and such to show you positioning of the different um armies between the Confederates and the um, Union soldiers. Uh and mm-hmm. there's some spots where they showed the Union soldiers and Confederates literally with like, I don't know, thirty feet between each other. And and a hill that separated them. So like they just crest the hill, and boom, there they are. Huh. So wow. um, yeah, it was int- it's just interesting to kind of go around there and 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 we could have spent a whole lot more time there, but we didn't really have as much time as we normally would have just because we're only staying a week here rather than two weeks. Um, <clears throat> so we just did a quick afternoon. Uh, visited the I want to say it's the third most haunted house in Mississippi, which is the McRaven House. Um, okay. That was very now interesting. You're speaking my language. Um, yeah, they they didn't. Um, we didn't have any haunting stuff there, but it's cool. The history of it. Uh, it's actually the house was built in three different periods: 1797, 1836, and 1849. So 1836 hmm. they did an addition, and then 1849 and another addition was on. But when they did the additions, they didn't do any renovation to the older parts of the house. So the 1797 part of the house looks like how it was built in 1797. 1836 wow. looks like how it was built in 1836. And, and oh. the house wasn't, didn't even receive modern utilities up until um, the 1960s. Um, and there's a whole lot of history wow. behind with, with that house. It was really interesting, especially if you're a history buff. So um, hmm. enjoy that little, that, our little that, That's not tour, the one you have little, to uh, sign a waiver because they're going to like throw axes at you or something, right? right? Or, or Covered in blood. <laughs> Fortunately, not. Fortunately, what was, not. That, what was it like Oklahoma have... or somewhere in the south? Where I feel like we talked about hmm. it a while back. Oh yeah, it was. It was the haunted house though, but it was more of like a you had to sign a waiver and a guy basically tortured you. Yeah. Yeah, we um, <laughs> we fortunately didn't have that, but this oh. ha- this um, site actually has um they do historical tours during the day which is what we did and then they have haunted tours in the evening hmm. so if depending on what you want to go for there for is uh the pin t- determines what time of day you, you you get there right up producer brian's alley right there you uh, like yeah, the i love day. history i love daytime history mm-hmm. yes <laughs> yeah like i said we yeah, did I'm the daytime tour uh-huh. <laughs> gotcha all right, producer Brian, how you be doing? Oh, I'm I'm all right. I uh, I'm, I've been I'm not sleeping or something. I don't know. <laughs> so if I'm off the bike. But I did discover actually discover is the wrong word. I had an idea last week. This is a okay. food. All right, I'm gonna call it a food hack. It might not be a hack. Uh, I sent you this information begin a couple of days ago, and you were not interested. Uh, so long story, but a week ago. Uh, it was just me and my son at dinner time. He's five, and I was making the blue back box of macaroni and cheese for him. Right, just the craft classic. Everyone's had it. Everyone knows what it is. Mm. And for whatever reason, I decide I open the box up and I just drop it. Right, so there's noodles everywhere. Like you don't decide to drop the, the no, box. No, I'm just, just you know in a hurry or okay. who knows what? Who knows? Right. I'm an old man now. I fall and I drop things. <laughs> That's just what happens. So I dropped the box of noodles. So all right, well, I got like ten boxes of this. I'm not too worried about it. But so I get the, I get rid of it. But I still have the cheese packet. 
you know, that you mix with the milk and butter. It's like, you know what? What can I do with this? And as it hit me, it's like, I bet this would be good on, like, to make cheese popcorn. So that's essentially what they use, right? It's just like cheese dust, mm-hmm. which is what this is. Huh. So I was like, I eh, will leave it sitting here. My wife was like, why don't you just make regular macaroni? Like, just buy a box of noodles and use that packet. I was like, that's boring. <laughs> I do something <laughs> different. <laughs> so today, I made popcorn. And we use, the, like, I get the kernels. I've got a little microwave popper thing. Okay. We buy a whole jar right. of kernels. You put them in there, and it, like, it's somewhere between the Jiffy Pop and the bag, right? <laughs> it's right. fresh popcorn. Okay. Right. So do that. I melt some butter, and I just dump this whole packet of cheese on top of this popcorn. Hmm. Listen, it was amazing. Really? Was so, if you like cheese pop, I love cheese popcorn. It was so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was so it was perfect. It didn't need any salt. It didn't eat it, it was I maybe could put a little extra butter in there, but it was absolutely perfect. And some of the cheese mm-hmm. didn't get mixed in there, so it was the bottom. I just left that alone. I didn't like bury my face in it. Yeah. But, um it was excellent. It's almost worth, I would say, if to buy the box just for the cheese packet to make popcorn. Skip the macaroni mm-hmm. cheese. So craft? Yeah. Yeah, craft looks like you got a an additional market for your cheese packets. There you go. So but don't try they that sell out. that anyway? Like I you could just buy powdered cheese. <clears throat> I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not buying so, powdered cheese. So let me. I'm not going to buy <laughs> buy powdered cheese. But I'll buy Kraft macaroni, dump noodles on the floor, and then just use the packet. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it was an yeah. accident. Next time it'll be an accident. Air quotes. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think so. I I, I didn't. I guess fully understand. I would think that you would need something more than just the packet, but it was butter. It had butter in there too. It was butter in the packet. So, um, I like to use, I put a little bit of salt on my popcorn, some garlic powder and Parmesan cheese. So I kind of like that option. Uh, the other option Mm. is I use the killer honeybees, uh, Cosmos Q rub. And I put that on top of there. That's good stuff. That's very good too. It sounds weird, but it's really good. It's awesome. I've done it. I, it's it's great. Yeah. Uh, I like this week old fashioned butter, mm, this, butter dripping, mm, salty scrambled eggs, like the movie theater butter. Is what you want? Like the, yeah, yeah. It's just uh, hydrogenated I do oil. Try, yeah, exactly. But I do want to try that um, that cheese trick you did. That sounds really good. It's really good. Yeah. Mm. Make pasta salad you, with noodles or something. Do something else with the noodles and just use the. <laughs> yeah, they don't true. waste it. Yeah. Uh, do you ever do like the the Chicago thing where they do like the caramel and the cheese together and you're supposed to eat them? <sighs> Listen, like that's a big Chicago thing. Is the Chicago thing? I've been doing it my whole life. Like you get the tin, <laughs> the, the Christmas tin with the three flavors in it. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you just eat you eat the cheese and caramel together. And then you get rid of the butter one because it's nasty anyway, right? right? They're actually selling that. I found this in the grocery store a couple of days ago. I forget what brand it was, but you can buy just a bag of cheese and caramel popcorn. Mm-hmm. It didn't last yeah. very long. It was kettle corn. It was cheese caramel kettle corn. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> the kettle corn. That's that's my jam. That's it. Well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, guys, it's been a rough week. It's been a <laughs> rough week. Um, my mother-in-law, KK, she will say she had a procedure done. Cause I'm not going to put all of her stuff out here on, you know, the yeah. webs, yeah, but, but, um, she's fine. No problems, no issues. Everything's fine, but it's got a long recovery period. And so my wife, uh, has had went down to Georgia to, to spend the week with her. Um, you know, I was a little disappointed she wasn't going to take the the baby. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but it, it has been a week where I've been uh, dad extraordinaire since Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife is coming back tomorrow, so I'm so happy about that. Um, but here's the thing. Like, if, if roles were reversed and I had to go away for a week, nobody would think anything about, like, hey, mm-hmm. you know, mom, are you okay? You know, any any issues? But as soon as I say I'm a single dad for the week, everybody is like, are you okay? Are you okay? And, and rightfully so, because I'm not okay. I'm so tired. I'm exhausted. 
but but I was thinking like, wow, man, like it's so different for men and women when they're in the situation where they have to take care of the kid by themselves. And um, we got uh, I got a friend that that has got four kids by themselves, and I'm like, how in the world do do you do that? She's like, it's just you got to become insane. And I, I have one, and I'm like, yeah, I totally get that. Yeah. So up at seven, you know, and also it's been a really stressful work week. So we had that. We had DCBC this week. We we're doing the show this week. So it's just been a lot. <clears throat> um, luckily, mm. my dad was able to help for a little bit, just picking her up. And so it has been it has been awful. But here's here's where it got worse. So this morning, and things were cruising along. Like she's going to bed. It's like seven thirty, and she's out. Mm. And then you know I come back or work or <clears throat> do DCBC or our downtown and cigar and bourbon club or you know you know whatever I have to do. Clean up is the majority of it. <laughs> So things have been like clicking along really well. She goes to bed at six thirty, um, gets up around. She goes to bed at seven thirty to eight, gets up around six thirty to seven. This morning though, <clears throat> I got too comfortable with things, so I just you know pop up out of bed six thirty. I hear her crying. I go <laughs> go into the to the my nursery. I unzip the the nursery thing, uh-uh. and then I look down, and there is a big pile of what I thought was poop. I was like, Oh no. And then <clears throat> I look at her hands and she's got her hands in. I'm like, what? How? And then I look at her clothes and she's got a onesie on. And then I'm like, how did the, and I look at her backside, dry as a, dry as a bone. How in the world? And then I saw another spot. So at some point in the night, she like up chucked. Oh like no. Aww. And it is everywhere. <laughs> and so I'm like, holding her, like trying to get her to the bathtub, waddling as fast as I can, zip her down, strip her down, get her in the tub. And I just like pour the shower on her. She's like crying. I'm just like getting all this stuff off of her, throwing sh- my like old man, you know, shampoo on her, everything else. It was, <laughs> it was a rough, it was a rough morning this morning. Um, got her bagged and tagged and got her out the door. And man, it was just, I'm exhausted. So thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Donna says on the uh, chat says got too comfortable with things. Oh. Famous last words. Yeah, absolutely. Never let your absolutely. guard down. You never do. You got to be on the offense the entire time. You can't. You can't stop. <clears throat> can't stop. Won't stop. So I have a so, conf- confession for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, my kids are older than yours, but mm-hmm. I apparently I've never been alone with them for more than the several hours. I think <laughs> what. That's what I've been accused of that. Because every time I've been given the opportunity to have a weekend with both of them, I conveniently arrange for someone to go to grandma's house. <laughs> At least one, if not both. I just said to say, hey, you know, what do you think about this? You know, it just happens. Then I've been, and my mm-hmm. wife says, you realize you every, like every time this is what happens. And I didn't realize I was doing that, but it's self-preservation maybe, but. Mm-hmm. I just, it, I could probably rough. do it. I could handle it. I think I could handle it. I, but we'll, we, we yeah, find, no, we'll never find it. out. But <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's been it's been quite a ride. So, and then you know, to top all of it off, like Jess is coming back tomorrow, but she's been working a ton as well, taking oh, yeah. care of uh, KK. So she's exhausted. So mm-hmm. none of us gets a break. You know, we're both. You know, trying to to handle a little. Yeah, so it's not over yet. <laughs> it's, it's not over. It's not over till next weekend. Really, basically, is what we're looking at. Yeah. So there's. Wow. That. All right. So here's our southern phrase of the week. You may or may not have heard this one, but uh, who licked the rat off your candy? Has anybody, somebody ever heard that phrase? Who licked the rat off your candy? I can't say I have. I haven't heard that before. Hmm. Uh, the southern phrase where somebody could, uh, somebody's, you know, being mean or, you know, being aggressive or whatnot, or just having a bad day or whatever, and just, you know, hmm. pouting around or whatever. So you could say that to somebody who licked it off your candy. That just mean, what's going on with you? Why are you not being yourself? So, huh. I don't know. You could try that one. I, I probably would have All people right. say that to me quite often, I imagine. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, so um, let's go. Let's talk about this Will Smith slap. Everybody's <sighs> talking about it. We were going to hold off. Aaron's not here. She's not feeling well. 
Um, so I really kind of wanted to, her to chime in, but uh, we can't go another week because nobody's going to talk about it next week anyway. So no. we'll, uh, I don't think they will. They'll probably slap someone else this weekend and we'll talk about that. Right? No, you think so? It's just the beginning. Wow. So if it's well documented on the show that I'm a huge Will Smith fan, I, I've, I've always loved him since before Fresh Prince. Um, and so he's always been an idol. He's always been somebody I looked up to always kind of thought he was just the coolest guy ever. And um, man, that the slap, it, it, I'm sure you guys have seen it, heard it. It's been on the news, whatnot. Um, it really, I, I think the thing for me is I, I've always expected more from Will, and this just seems like he he went and sunk down to to a different level that I don't think that we're used to. But I, I do think that it's important to note, like, and bring attention to mental health. Um, I'm sure Will's going through a lot of stuff right now, um, and it just wasn't him. It's just not his his normal, typical self. So I guess there's some something else going on behind the scenes that, that we're not privy to, but um, just so out of character for him. So that's my thoughts. Uh, I don't think it was right. Um, it was kind of bad, badass looking though that the slap I thought, but uh, <laughs> I don't think he should have done it. But <clears throat> I don't know. I want to get you guys' thoughts on one. W- what are your thoughts? And then the the idea was posed to us at DCBC is do we think that it was staged? Um, so I want to hear you guys' thoughts and then if you think it was staged or not, and we'll go to uh Magic Man first. Well, first of all, uh kudos to Chris Ro- Chris Rock. Yeah, Chris Rock. I was thinking Kid Rock. Chris Rock. <laughs> uh for, would have been a totally maintaining- different thing if it was Kid Rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, but no, kudos to Chris Rock for the professionalism he maintained. After, you know during that that event um i think you know in front of millions of lot of people on you know the, the crowd that was inside of that auditorium and then and then knowing that you know there's millions of people watching on tv all around the world um just you know that's embarrassing to have happen to you mm-hmm. um but he maintained a, a professional um demeanor now should he have have said the joke that he said no um he shouldn't have done that um but that doesn't warrant somebody going up then and, and pimp slapping him the way will smith did so um oh, i don't think you we're know. allowed to say that word anymore <laughs> <laughs> well uh, it, it it wasn't a little pat on the cheek i mean it was a yeah, I, mean, I also it, don't think you know what that word means, but uh, what kind of slap that is. But but we'll digress. <laughs> it, yeah. So anyway, it's more of a backhand, um, right? Than a, right. It's yeah, a full more, forward. So yeah. we're, this is a completely different yeah, slap we're dealing forward, with here. Yeah. This, this is yeah. This was a. <laughs> I was I was trying to find another word. There's another type of slap, but I didn't want to say it. So, anyways, um, starts with a B. Yeah. So, anyways, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but kudos All to right, him yeah. now as, as far as um you know will smith if he's truly re- uh, regretful for what he did then you know we we do need to show some level of of grace with him um but you know he, if he has consequences coming to him like you know being revoked from the academy and stuff then yeah i mean there's going to be consequences to your action, but we shouldn't, you know, condemn him, you know, <laughs> be judgeful or whatever uh, for any of that. And, and then there was another part you said, oh, was it real or not? Um, I think it was real. I actually saw an interesting video earlier um, where a guy who studies body language was talking about um, he analyzed what happened with Jada Pinkett Smith when Chris Rock told the joke, what happened with Chris Rock when uh, Will Smith approached him and slapped him. And then what happened with Will Smith while he was slapping, walking to the slap back to his chair. And then um, when he accepted his, his award um, and it was really interesting. Um, after watching that video, I don't really think that um, he, it was, it was staged at all. I think it was something real because people's reactions were too authentic and, and weren't the kind that you would expect if somebody was, was acting. So. Anyways, yeah. Good take. 
producer Brian? Uh, you know, I, th- I think what this comes down to with the public perception is we've, we've put these entertainers on a pedestal a little bit. You know, mm. we pay them a lot of money. They entertain us. They're celebrities because of what they do, not because, you know, there's, they're not any different from me or you at the end of the day outside of maybe mm-hmm. the, the bigger yeah. swimming pool or any <laughs> swimming pool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they're they're human. They're people. They have emotions. They're flawed, just like the rest of us. So you know they're subject to mental breakdowns and emotional things. You know, I was I was talking with you the other night. My instinct is to protect my family, whether it's the right thing or not. That's my instinct, mm-hmm. and yeah. that, I think that may have been his instinct in this situation. Um. You know, Chris Rock took it like a champ. I, I was really impressed. I don't know if it, uh, if you line up a hundred guys and let them get slapped like that, if they just keep on rolling, right? I mean, there's a yeah, yeah. brawl or jumping on his back, or I don't know. <laughs> just yeah, something else should have gone down. I'm thinking, you know, back in my head, I keep picturing like a a WWE scene or something, you know, <laughs> or there's a chair involved or like a stone right. cold stunner, a ladder, you know, something like that. But, uh, the, the farther we get away from the actual event though, talking about whether it's real or not, I think it seems like it's the real thing. Yeah. You know, Wednesday, Tuesday, it was easy to say, yeah, I don't know. But now it's like, I think that, that really happened. And that was real feelings happening. So. Yeah. Well, the fact that both the camps have not said anything about it also kind of, to me, feels like, ooh. Um, and then somebody snuck in a camera to Chris's last show. I saw that. And uh, he was just like, I'm going to talk about it, but I'm not going to talk about it here. Yeah. I'm going to say some serious stuff, I'm gonna say some funny stuff, um, but I'm not going to, I still got more processing to do. So to me, that also kind of invokes like it's a, re- a real real issue or a real scenario that happened. Yeah. And his ticket prices went, just went way up. By the oh way. yeah. The promoters Absolutely. Are taking advantage of that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it was, it was staged at all. If you look at, and by the way, there's been more people review this footage. I think than JFK at this point, because, because people are going frame by frame to see what happened and whatnot. Um, you know, you look at Will, he's laughing about it, yucking it up. And then it shot, you see Jada and she's not yucking it up. And then Will sees Jada not yucking it up. Yeah. And then he goes slaps her. And then you see Jada smiling after he, on his way back mm-hmm. in. So you're like, oh, he probably, you know, he's defending her, her honor or whatnot. But um, I think this thing kind of also brings up another point that I think is really more worth talking about is, you know, I'm a big fan of Will. I can also, in one hand, I could say I'm a fan of Will Smith, but I could also, in another hand, say I don't agree with him. And I think that we've got to a point in our society where you, you, that's, that's a rare thing, especially in politics. You can't say, Hey, I, I like Trump, but I don't agree with him. Or I don't like Trump, but I agree with some of the things that he did. You can't do that in the society, it seems like, anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so now you've got people with will, like, either we're going to uh, cancel him or we're going to embrace him based on if you think it was right or not. You don't have, I like him as a fan and I, I support him as an actor or whatnot. But, bro, that wasn't cool. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's very interesting. Don't go ninja, nobody. Don't need ninja. There you go. That's the bottom line. That's the, that's the bottom line. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I think that we can agree uh, with people and not totally support them or vice versa of I don't support you as a, as, you know, a, you know, I, I don't like what you, what you stand for, but I also don't, I'm not going to throw you out completely. It's just because you make one mistake. And this isn't a, no one is, was, I mean, there was pain, but it wasn't like no one died. No one got sick. No one went to the hospital. Right. Does Will Smith deserve to have his career canceled over that? That's the question for me. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I don't, I don't think so. Ryan, any thoughts? Any, anything you want to say? I, I, I don't think he should have his career canceled. I mean, it's obvious he's done 
some damage to it. I mean, who who's going to want to cast yeah. somebody that could pop off, you know, at any moment. So he's, yeah. he's got a lot of rebuilding. He's going to have to do. Um, yeah. But, you know, so we, we had, we have the conversation here about, um, you know, he shouldn't be canceled, uh, but you should be able to be a fan and, and, and disagree with what he did, which is, you know, I'm completely in agreement with. Um, there's another discussion being had about, okay, he did this thing in front of, in public, in front of millions of people. And yet nothing happened. You know, he, he, he assaulted, you know, he assaulted mm-hmm. Chris Rock yet. No charges are being have yet been filed. Um, he wasn't kicked out of the award ceremony. You know, mm-hmm. the things that, you know, if, if one of us went and did that to somebody, we would have been kicked out immediately by security. Security would come, surrounded us, and escorted us out, drug us out. Um, sure. You know, any, anybody. So, so why, why is that different for, for Will Smith? What, what makes him any different? that he he doesn't yeah. and, and i i heard that the academy did ask him to leave and he refused but we all know that if they really wanted him gone there's police security every there's enough people you know enforcement people there that could have removed him from the auditorium so yeah 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 but i mean you're not gonna do you're not gonna have that look you know if you're the academy and you're the producer or whatever you're not gonna gonna do that because there's gonna be cameras everywhere of the police Mm -hmm. taking him out in handcuffs. Chris isn't, isn't filing any charges. So if there's not, if he's not charging, he's not filing charges and there's nothing to arrest him for. So, you know, I I don't think the Academy really did ask them, ask him to leave, but even if they did, that would have been a really bad look, especially since, you know, he won the the award later that night. So um, yeah, I don't, I think that there's a little bit more to that. That's just my my two take, my two cents. They don't call uh, they don't call it Holly weird for nothing. <laughs> that is true. Uh, you know, some some people might say sticking up to sticking up for your wife, whatever, is a is a sign of being a man. Uh, I know, producer Brian, we talked. Uh, you know, our generation is different than than another generation, but uh, the Babylon B, uh, which is a satire. Uh, oh, no. website <laughs> <laughs> has has given us 12 signs to look for to know that if we're a man or not uh we were going to also do uh 12 signs of uh if you're a woman but we're going to save that uh for Aaron next next time we're on so i'm going to ask you guys here are 12 common warning signs from babylon b remember it's a satire uh website <clears throat> to, if you might some be people man. forget that sometimes Right, absolutely. So number one, here we go. Uh, do you pretend to en- enjoy cigars? There we go. There's number one. <laughs> pretend to enjoy cigars. Pretend to, to enjoy cigars. Wow, that's a deep question, right? <laughs> I would just like a yes or no. Oh, I don't pretend. I like cigars. Okay. Yes, Fine. I love cigars. So I definitely don't pretend. I like cigars as well. Mm, they contain. All right, so... So far, we're one for one. Is it uncomfortable crossing your legs for some reason? Uh, well, it can be. Okay. If it depends, on, it depends on how tight the the, the weave is there, right? <laughs> what is? You know, if you go like <laughs> super crossed or like right. perpendicular crossed, there's different situations. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. Right. I do the. I'll do the man cross, you know, with you have your ankle on your knee type thing, but I don't yeah. do the okay. one knee over the other knee. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh. okay. Uh, do you stand by open car hoods, pointing and gesturing? No, I get on in there and fix stuff. <laughs> All right. I do. I, I actually, I changed before the wife left. I changed the uh, mass air intake filter. Um, I did it all by myself, oh. which I felt like a man after I did that. So, so far, so good. All right, get all her right. done. Get her done. All right. So <laughs> this one might be a little controversial. Can you effortlessly win at every woman's sport? Effortlessly win at every woman's. No. 
Yeah, no, I no. can't. I can't do that. No. <clears throat> Especially the fast ones. <laughs> I was say I don't play sports, so you know. <laughs> do you do you enjoy thinking about absolutely nothing for long periods of time? Yes. 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 Do you refer to a team or professional athlete who we have no idea who you are as we? <laughs> We're in this together. Right. Yeah. If, if you're, <laughs> yeah. It's a we. Yeah. Yeah. It's a royal Kentucky. We. Yeah. Kentucky mm. basketball. We did not make the, we did not have a good run yeah. in, the final, in the final four. Yeah. 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 All right. Here's number eight. Can you navigate unfamiliar roads? Um, but are hopelessly lost in a mall. Uh, yes, that's correct. Yeah, I yeah, can't. that's correct. Yeah. Uh, can you pause Lord of the Rings eight hundred times to provide commentary? Well, if you buy the right version, the commentary is already there. <laughs> All right, so we'll take it. We'll say that as a yes. Uh, would you be completely and utterly helpless without your spouse? Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, All right. Uh, Number 11. Did you think about sex 27 times while reading this list? 28, 29. Good grief. No. (laughs) No, I did not. I hope not. Uh, I think that's just because of our age. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, but Uh, big in reading this list to me has done nothing. I'm I'm just. I yeah, I'm the absolute <laughs> positive um, uh, opposite of what Viagra does to you. Yeah. Uh, do you think... have? Here's the last one. Do you have an XY chromosome? Yes. Yeah. Science. Right. Uh, so I have whatever we... chromosome makes you a man. It's the Y. <laughs> so out of we've answered <laughs> between nine and eleven, so we are definitely a man. So congratulations, gentlemen. We are officially men. Yay. Uh, I'm going to need some more. Oh, I didn't go through. Oh, uh, uh, I didn't come through. Didn't go through. There's a TikTok oh, account, and I, I absolutely love it. The guy will say one or two statements and then say, be a man. And so, for example, like one of them is uh, skip, skip your AA meeting. Be a man. <laughs> yeah. The account's called Obviously, Boston Be a Man. So go look it up. Okay. Oh, they're funny. We were <sighs> they're hoping to play some of them. They're intentionally stupid. But I, I can't. Right. I thought it was going to go through, but it's not. Uh, no, well. Can I? I don't know. We're live. I can do this, right? Live. We're live. Nobody's listening. What's going to happen? Fine. What's the worst? We have how many listeners do we have right now? Three? Uh, I'm I just see one. one. <laughs> oh. if I re- the other two bailed when we started talking about Will. Let me try this one to see. You gonna play? Yeah, I- nope. That's not the uh, idea. That's supposed to be working, but it's not. You can do it. I believe in you. <sighs> oh, oh, you can do it. Oh, oh, oh! Watch this. Here we go. Do that. Here we go. Chug a pot of coffee. <laughs> Be a man. <laughs> All right. All right. I got him. Here we go. Here we go. Another one. Um, just talk to the bartender instead. Be a man. Just talk to the bartender instead. It was the A. I'm missing the first. Oh, is that the A? Yeah. Why is it not? Why is it starting so slow? Oh, don't go to AA meetings. Don't go to AA meetings. Just talk to the bartender instead. The bartender. Be a man. <laughs> Be a man. Oh, uh, that was the one I was going to try. Oh. Uh, they're dry. Don't use lotion. Spit on them. Be a man. <laughs> Your hands are dry. I see what the problem is. If I mouse uh, over the thing, it starts playing with no audio first. Mm, gotcha. Uh, That'll, that can do it. Any kind. Be a man. <laughs> Yeah, this is going so Obviously fun. not. Never use safety equipment of any kind. Anyway, you get the gist. Yeah, yeah, they're fun. All right, so the moment you guys have been waiting for for the entire show, the fish in sandwich bracket. I'm 
I'm the reason the whole world love it. Now I gotta crush it. Vallejo fishes. Then you should be disgusted. How dare you sell a square fish asking us to trust it? A half slice of cheese, Mickey D's on a budget. All these crispy fish is simply it. With lines round the corner, we might need a guest list. Eggs and stage left, the sandwiches taste. All right. Um, so this week we had McDonald's versus uh, Popeyes. <sighs> yeah, that's correct. The last week. Last week we had Burger King versus Hardee's. Hardee's, and Burger King won. I was not not happy about that one. <laughs> um, Shocked it everyone. Won by default, yeah, yeah. Because there's a technicality. Brian never got it. Yeah. yeah. So this week we did Popeyes versus McDonald's. McDonald's to me is the, you know, the nostalgic fish sandwich you know what you're going to expect it's consistently consistent um <laughs> and that's that's about it it's yeah uh a square a square fish which i don't know where those come from in nature a piece of cheese tartar sauce and a bun um do you want to go first what was your thoughts on mcdonald's <sighs> fish sandwich and there's some controversy i think with your father too right uh, yeah, I had a conversation with my dad about, I told him what we were doing on the show with fish sandwiches. And he said, his first question was, was Shomar's fish sandwich on there? I said, no, mm. that's not fair <laughs> <laughs> to everybody else. Local chain, local chain, technically. Uh, but he said he's had a bunch of them. He's had like the Arby's, he's had the Bojangles. But at the end of the mm. day, McDonald's is his favorite. He's still mm. my father. I think it's changed. Watching your father. Yeah. He's still your father. He's still he, our relationship is still okay. That there was no <laughs> slap no hands slapping of any kind, face slapping. Right. No one was that offended by it. Uh I'd like the sandwich. I mm. thought it was good. Um I found myself sitting in the drive through thinking about the double because there's a picture you can get a double, double fillet of fish yeah. or like a double quarter pounder. And if it wasn't for, for the purity of the contest here, I would totally have gotten the double fish. Um, it might have changed some things. I yeah. liked it. Uh, I'd probably give it a six. Mm, wow. That's, okay. You know, so it it would have beat out the Burger King if it won or if it wins? Based on, yeah, I mean, if we're looking at it you know, week to week like that, yeah, I'd say I like I, mm. And it, again, it could have been it was fresher because I got it. It wasn't door dashed, mm. so. That gotcha. may have been a game changer okay. for me. I didn't have any uh, reflux after that one either. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was um, <clears throat> I was trying to eat said sandwich with small batch, trying to eat a cheeseburger. <clears throat> so, you know, she was she was eating that and then wanting my fish sandwich and grabbing for fries and screaming about not having ice cream. So it was not mm. a pleasurable experience uh, at this point. Uh, so that, you know, there's some, some points deducted for that, even though it's not their fault. Um, I, I thought it was basic, you know, there was nothing that I was like, oh, wow, this tastes good. There was a slight crunch yeah. to that one, which there, there wasn't one, um, for the, for the Burger King one that I had. So, uh, touche for the crunchy, um, the fish just wasn't super flavorful again. Yeah. Um, but that was just my, my two take on that one. I would probably give it. Like a five and a half out of out of ten. It yeah. wasn't great. I didn't hate the cheese, and I thought the cheese would really set me off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's only a little bit, but it didn't bother me that it was. It didn't. Its presence didn't. Like I don't yeah. want a cheese slice on my fish sandwich. Period. I just don't want that. Yeah. Um, but it was there, and I left it there. Um, it was. It just it was fine. Yeah, you didn't hate it. Um, all right. And so then we, the, the battle, uh, was with Popeye's. Mm -hmm. I picked uh, that sandwich up this, this afternoon. I did not have small batch at lunch. So that was fantastic. <laughs> um, I'll let, I'll let you tell your version of the Popeye's and, and I'll tell mine. I said mine's a little long. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Uh, once again, it was rainy today at lunchtime, so I opted to go inside a restaurant. It's about 20 minutes for me to get to Popeye's. 
uh, one uh, just outside of Uptown in Charlotte there. Good uh, night. Yeah, it's about 20 minutes, whatever. That's the closest one. I didn't want to go to Concord. I was <laughs> okay. slightly closer. Um, right over there, walk in, no big deal. I order. So I order, I want, order, I say, I want the fish sandwich combo. Right? Mm-hmm. The lady says, okay, do you want anything else with that? No. It occurred to me later, she didn't ask me what, what side I wanted. I said, oh. was like, it was only like five bucks. I was like, man, that's really cheap. I look oh, at my receipt boy. and it says fish sandwich a la carte. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever. You know, I don't care. I'll just eat the sandwich. Not a big deal. Right. right. So wait a minute. You're there for the sandwich. I'm in for a sandwich anyway. It's okay if I don't have anything else to eat with it. I'll do that later. It's cheaper. So I get a bag. Right. I go out of the truck. I said, I'm going to eat it fresh while I'm, in the car, while I'm in the car instead of driving 20 minutes, right? Because I want. Right, don't, wait, sure. don't wait! Don't wait on a fish sandwich, guys. So I open up the bag. <laughs> I look in there, and there's the largest piece of meat I've ever seen on a fish sandwich. Mm-hmm. And then I look a little closer, and I like grab a piece. Oh, no. It's a chicken sandwich. Oh no! <laughs> so oh, no. I get I get out of the truck. And I go back inside, oh, no. and I go, "This isn't fish. This is chicken." And she goes, well, "It's supposed to be fish." And in the back of my head, I'm going, well, duh, that's what I ordered. <laughs> I, just, I just smiled, and they fixed it. Uh, Got my fish sandwich. Go back out to the truck to mm. eat. Open it up. Okay. So this sandwich is a bun, tartar sauce, pickles, and a, like a mm. fish fillet, right? Mm. Oh, Th- no. There had to have been like a third of a cup of tartar sauce on this fish sandwich. Ooh. It was. Oh, no. Pun intended, swimming in tartar sauce. <laughs> oh no! Like, if you imagine like going somewhere where they like dip your like sandwich at Buffalo or barbecue or something, like just coat the mm-hmm. whole thing. This fish sandwich, oh, and I don't mind tartar sauce, but this was excessive. Hey, buddy. This is like just yeah. get the jar and a spoon and sit down or something. Situation. It was a lot of tartar mm-hmm. sauce. Um, Goodness. That being said. I had a lot of time to think about it because I didn't have a drink with my food on my 20 minute drive back. <laughs> oh, no. So that everything lingered. And I really got a chance to <laughs> embrace this chicken sandwich and everything it, it gave to me. This chicken fish sandwich. Yeah. I really liked it. Uh, the tartar sauce didn't kill the, like the sandwich held up to the mm. lake of tartar sauce on it. <laughs> it was crispy. Tartar. Um, I watched them pull it out of a little drawer, so I know it wasn't quite fresh. But I was there at eleven thirty, mm. so I know they didn't make it for breakfast. It can't be that sure. old, right? Um, mm. The pickle was good. The bread was good. It had a little bit of bite. Had a little kick to it. It's a touch spicy, mm-hmm. and I like that. Yep. But when I was first eating, I'm going, "Is this better than McDonald's?" I had to really think because of the the excess Ooh. tartar sauce. But okay. on the twenty minute drive home. It's definitely better than McDonald's. I really liked it. Okay. Yeah. So very okay. good. I'll agree with you. It was a very crispy uh, sandwich. But if you were to put them side by side, you know which one's real fish and which one's not. It's a, right. It's a big piece of fish. It's a big sandwich. Yeah. Um. Uh, so just quanti- qual- quantity, not qual- well, both quality and quantity, I thought was better than McDonald's. Um. I felt like I was full after I ate it. Yeah. Um, the other one, I felt like I needed like three more just to kind of start to feel full. Totally agree. Um, and so, but it was crispy, delicious kick. There's a little kick to it. Mm-hmm. Tartar sauce was good. I didn't have nearly as much as you did. Oh, so man. there's that. Um, but I thought it was much better. So I'm sending Aaron also uh, chimed in and she said she liked Popeye's better. Yeah. yeah. So we are moving Popeye's to the next level. Uh, so congratulations to Popeye's, the winner of this round of the fish bracket. Fish, we uh, Can I buy you a fish sandwich? Congratulations <laughs> to Popeye's. I love that. <laughs> I love it. No doubt. Yeah, I would. I, um, that was that was good. I'd eat it again. I almost absolutely. actually my original thought because they have a spicy. Mm-hmm. My first, my initial, my instinct was give me one of each of these. Oh, that would have been. That would have been good. It would have been great. Who knows what they would have given me then? Two, a half chicken and a half fish or. What did they do with the other, with the chicken sandwich? Well, I didn't keep it. That's for sure. I was kind of hoping they would just be, oh, okay, here's a new sandwich. But no, they like inspected. They see aside that thing. Mm. I didn't see it go in a trash can. 
I totally had my fingers all over it. So I hope they enjoyed that. Mm. Yeah. It was lunchtime. Maybe next time just lick it and then and you'll and then Almost tell them you a bite. It. Should have just taken a bite out of it. Oh, that would have been good. Yeah. Oh, this is a trish. <laughs> uh, Ryan, you've been to Mississippi. Uh, they've got some good good eats out there. Have you had it? Um, for this part of the trip, no. The, here in Vicksburg, we we haven't really been out to eat. Uh, I, well, let me back up. We did eat at a Popeyes. Um, I didn't oh. get a fish sandwich. Um, and we did eat, <laughs> they actually have a, a Whataburger here as well. So we did hit up the Whataburger. Oh, yes. But um, there is a restaurant that we want to go to tomorrow night. And it's, I think it's called Rus- Rusty's on the Riverfront or something like that. It's in downtown Pittsburgh. Oh, come on. Um, and there we're going we to we try to hit it up tomorrow night and see see how that is there. Um, a lot of um, places serve gumbo around here. You know, a lot oh, of uh, Cajun yeah. cooking. It's all seafood though, so, right? It's a lot of shrimp in that. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of seafood and stuff. Um, so yeah, we're we're gonna hit that restaurant up tomorrow night. Um, and of course, you know, the last campground we were at uh, the last week and the week before last, we had that uh, Rusty's grill. No, I'm sorry. He has uh, the Rusty sells right. You had a chicken fingers. This place oh. at the lake, or guy's place on the water, or oh, something like right. that. Mm-hmm. That was there in yeah. um, Fulton, Mississippi, where we were, and that was they were really good there as well. We enjoyed them, good service, everything. So, um, yeah, hopefully we'll have a similar experience at this Rusty's place that we'll be at um, in Vicksburg. Nice. Are you looking it up, producer Brian? Well, I, I typed in Vicksburg, and then it occurred to me just to say, like, I'm looking because I've been to Mississippi, and I'm seeing nothing I recognize. Then I scroll east a little bit, and it shows me New York City. And it occurs, I realize, oh, this is Pennsylvania, Vicksburg. It's a little different. Because <laughs> I've been yeah, to... The um, restaurant's called Rusty's Riverfront Grill. Yeah. Where, did, where was I? was in Monroe. Ooh. That's Louisiana, not Mississippi. I drove through Mississippi. I went way farther. I went to Monroe, which is where the Duck Dynasty Come guys on, are from. <clears throat> There's yeah, Monroe is uh, uh, actually we're right off of I twenty. Yeah, um, and I if you keep going I twenty into M- Louisiana, that's where you get into Monroe. Yeah, or Monroe. I, I stayed there. In North it, Carolina, yeah. we call it Monroe. <laughs> so it's Monroe or is Monroe, it Monroe? What do they call it? Yo, Monroe. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> um, I think so you guys are eating there. Tomorrow? I think Megan is uh, is liking the menu, so. I'll, yeah, Tomorrow I, I evening, think I'm yes. going to join you. What was yeah, it called? I might be there. Rusty's Riverfront. All right, com. come on. Uh, they've got for their appetizers, y'all, uh, fried crab claws, mm. uh, flash fried blue crab claws served with lemon butter. I'm enjoying that. Fried green tomatoes. Now they got to be done right. They got to be done right. Why? Listen. Why does every stupid place have salads? Nobody gets them, uh, but they've got grilled wasabi tuna. That like sounds salad. delicious. You're going to go to a restaurant and get a salad? If I go there often enough, yes. Mm-mm. No. Uh, I'd get that grouper on a salad, hands down. That'd be well, delicious. They have, they have, yeah. Um, mm, coconut fried shrimp. I'm a sucker for coconut fried shrimp. Oysters, scallops. Here, here's anyway, the, oh, here's the real thing. Grits. The captain's platter, man. That's what. That's what I go for if I go in a place I've never been Absolute before. I want oh, as yeah. much food as on a plate as you can give me. Yeah. Listen, oh, I'm gonna get, I'm just... gonna Venmo you uh thirty one dollars, uh, Ryan, and you get the captain's platter and I want you to enjoy every bit of it. <laughs> Bring your EpiPen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. You can't eat it. Why yeah. you go to a seafood restaurant if you can't eat it? You're going to order the salad, aren't there you? There is a what cheeseburger. Is I see a cheeseburger. I see Hawaiian yeah. chicken. chicken. Uh, there's All steaks. Right. They have steaks, too. So There's steak. Ribeye, 16 ounce. Notice the chicken fingers are on the children's menu. Mm. Uh, it's, yep. Cheese grits. Ooh. Hey, that's how we roll. Uh, Ryan, they have uh, chocolate peanut butter pie. I want you to go for that. <sighs> or the bread pudding. Why you get okay. one? So if you can't get the fish, just eat all dessert. 
<laughs> key lime pie, coconut cream pie. I want every one of those. Absolutely. Red pudding with Maker's yeah, Mark whiskey red, sauce. Red pudding has oh, come on. Yeah, look at that. Uh, give me that sauce on those All sweet right. potato fries. That's what I want. Mm. Oh, come on. Producer Brian, sounds like we got a field trip we yeah. got to make, so we're going to end this show, and, and hey, we're going to meet you at Rusty's tomorrow. I, listen, yeah, I could totally drive I across the South and eat and talk about it. Golly. If you'd like to sponsor yeah. the show, so I, go to like Patreon.com. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You say right? I'm going to I'm gonna have to charge up the uh, GoPro here and uh, and do some videos of our meal. Dude, I would love that. To that would make me happy. <laughs> Ooh, dude, I would, I would, I'm a sucker for shrimp and grits too, which I made some the other day and they were fantastic. But, I love shrimp and grits. Oh, uh, yeah. This is my, this is my, my, that's my jam right here. That's the thing. We need to do that with Jim. Shrimp and grits. Yes. Fried chicken's next. Then we'll yep. do shrimp and grits. Shrimp and grits. You've that's, here first. that's Southern as you get, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Come on. Mm. Uh, also, uh, I was at my local coffee shop, Press and Porter, this, this morning <clears throat> and I got a, a pastry. Yeah, it was a pastry. But then I left. I was like, why are we not why are we not making biscuits and then injecting them with chocolate gravy? Why are we not doing this? This needs to be a thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know why we're not. Because How about honey it's, butter. It's mythical. Chocolate gravy is is, is just like the uh redneck egg roll. It doesn't actually exist. Have you not had chocolate gravy before? I don't remember. I might you might give it to me. I don't remember. I think mm-hmm. you brought some back from Kentucky. It. That's that's possible. Mm-hmm. I might have got a taste. You had it, Ryan? No, I was I was getting ready to say I haven't had it. And so when I'm huh? there in uh, in May and June, we got to get together and and figure out how to, to make that happen. Mm. All right. So I'm making you pasta, and we're gonna do um, Just back yeah, that rig do. down in his driveway. Okay, level it up. <laughs> make, make sure you leave room for Maddie to get around, but then and then we'll start cooking for you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, well, where do we want to go, producer Brian? Uh, do you have any wacky news that you want to? I have. I have lots of wacky news. If we want to get any of it, why don't you give us a couple of those? Because the other things we could talk about later. Uh, we're we're cruising here in about an hour and a half. Yeah, sounds. Hour like, hour oh, I, yeah. I don't even know what time it is anymore. I'm just. I'm finally waking up. I'm feeling the best I felt all day. So I don't want to stop. All right. So um, this is Wacky News brought to you by Level Up Logo. If you need uh, quality merchandise branded, you want to get your uh, Chris Rock t-shirts at leveluplogo.com. Oh, what do we see here? Uh, So we're all into fitness here, right? And fitting this pizza in my mouth. Yeah. So, hell yeah, brother. These crab, crab, crab cakes. This is, feels like the right audience for this article. So, there's a new mm, trend yeah. in the fitness world. Mm. Um, it says, um, this is a Wall Street Journal, by the way. Americans emerging exhausted and depleted from more than two years of pandemic are looking for something new in their workouts a good rest. Mm. Gyms say they are seeing increased demand for gentler classes, and they're expanding their mellower <laughs> offerings like yoga and meditation. They're also mm-hmm. rolling out dedicated recovery rooms equipped mm-hmm. with massage, lounge chairs, and self-massage gadgets. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's so essentially, show. you can pay money to go to the gym <laughs> and sit in a massage chair. And use Yo, a self massager if you really want to. I, I know that's what you're thinking. Do what? What were you saying? You're talking, you, I know you want to use that self massager, but <laughs> well, listen, listen. <clears throat> here's <laughs> here's here's what what gold gym people came around with. <clears throat> here's here's the business meeting, guys. Uh, folks aren't folks aren't coming into the gym anymore. They've you know they've they've been at home. They're fat, lazy. They're they're not coming back. What are we going to do? Well, let's target the fat demographic. And what are they going to do? They're just going to sit around and do nothing. So let's let's just put in some chairs, some massagers, let the fat people go. And here goes our profits again. And then fat fat people have been waiting to go to the gym now for forever. Now fatty's going to go there and just sit there and 
sit in the massage chair, get away from the the wife, kids, husband, what have you, and and say they went to the gym and they're just going to sit around and do nothing. This is perfect. Here's a this quote. Is what Patty's from, been waiting for forever. Here's a quote from this article. We're seeing the same customer return, but they've come out of the pandemic less focused on looking good at the pool and losing weight. Mm -hmm. They're just welcome to our world, skinny people. (laughs) Welcome to our world. Thank you for joining (laughs) Fat Five Fat and Ada Moon Pie. You guys are now indoctrinated into the fat lifestyle. For years, I focused on intense workouts and never had time for recovery. Says Mr. Frank, a 50-year-old transit authority employee. Now he has found that the sleepy yoga class guarantees a good <laughs> night's sleep. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> Patties are lining up to join now. Yep, that's it. We're just going to go take naps. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Oh, okay. Love it. Um, here, this is actually really interesting. Ah, I kind of want to save this for here, here's Here's the next. Here's what I need to do. I need to get in there ASAP. And I've got to start a cuddle class because I will cuddle with you for Spoon an extra, <laughs> you know, twenty five minutes, and I'll have, I'll, yeah, dude, I'm I'm all about that. Are you Come the on. personal trainer for that class? Like you're going to pay you for sessions? For cuddle class. Like, yep, uh, I am a teddy bear, <laughs> dude. I would be perfect for that job. If there's a professional cuddler service and needs somebody, I'm that dude. I will oh. fall asleep faster than anything. There's no other intention. I'm just taking a nap and hold me. Yeah, how about that? Oh, man. The, uh, did you guys hear, this is another new, new article about um, the maple syrup heist in Canada. Oh, no. Uh, so, I don't know when this actually went down, but the Supreme Court of Canada upheld a $9 million fine for the ringleader mm. all of a 2012 heist of more than $18 million in maple syrup. Oh, wow. In Canada, eh? And yes. Mm. Uh, found guilty in 2017 of theft, trafficking, and fraud for stel- selling, stealing, excuse me, $18 million worth of maple syrup. Uh, it doesn't say if that's Canadian dollars or American dollars. He was uh, sentenced to eight years in prison and fined nine million dollar fine. Mm. Well, I want to know how you traffic maple syrup. That is a sticky situation, sir. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So they found, yeah, but I didn't know. That was amazing to me. Like that that happened. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. in national no- news. You give it twenty minutes, and there'll be a Netflix documentary all over that. <clears throat> oh, what do you? What would you call that? Mm. Slow rolling, sticky situation. <laughs> sticky the Canadian situation. job. Yeah. The... <laughs> I watched um, <clears throat> uh, Bad Vegan this past week. Um, that was an interesting Netflix documentary. Oh, I've heard about that. Have I yeah, heard about that? Maybe I, have. <clears throat> Maybe I have. I don't remember. It, yeah, basically a uh, a person way before all the raw vegan stuff was cool was had a <clears throat> awesome like million dollar restaurant in New York and then gave it all up because she thought she was basically trying to um her man worked for the CIA and was convinced her that that uh they're going to live an alternate reality with some fake gods that are supposed to like give them all these, all this money. And then basically she just embezzled a bunch of money and stole from the, stole from the the bank accounts, the business bank accounts. But it was pretty interesting. She got busted by, he ordered a Domino's pizza and pigeon forge and that's how they tracked him down. So that's the the reason for, um, no, Oh, I don't know. It didn't, I think it was like a pepperoni and cheese. I think it was just a regular. It's not vegan. Uh, anyway, sure. yeah, it was interesting. Huh. But yeah, maple syrup heist. Yeah. Sounds delicious, though. Yeah, we oh, should, I need to should, call our Vermont friends and get some. We need to call them and see what yeah. they think about it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. While we call right. Alaska, too. Well, you know, uh, Magic Man's getting closer to that time zone, so as he goes west, he can probably facilitate that. Mm. There you go. 
<laughs> Magic Man, you can go. you make it up to Alaska in that thing? Yeah, actually, we could. Uh, both of Lori and I have our uh, passports, so we could make it up into Canada. And, um, you know, right. that's in fact, that's eventually we'd like to get up there at some point, but it'll probably be a couple of years. It won't be this year for sure. Yeah. Well, maybe but by what I can do then is I can listen from up there. And then you, yeah. Yeah. Oh. What I'll do is I'll get up there, I'll listen, and then I can say, we can say, hey, we have a listener from Alaska. Yeah. Yeah. From Alaska. yeah. That's what we brilliant. <laughs> Two years I'll in the making stuff. to make that happen. Brilliant. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you guys heard of the band Metallica? Anybody? Oh, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> and mainly because of the Napster thing. Okay. Because he took down Napster. I, I hate heavy metal. I'm not a heavy metal guy. It's the antithesis of heavy metal. Okay. That's fine. That, that, that doesn't preclude you from being interested in this article, but I was a Metallica fan for some time in my younger, actually, I still like him if I think him on, but um, a Tampa heavy metal musician and artist will soon see a toilet he sculpted to look like Metallica drummer Lars Ulrich displayed for thousands of visitors at the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum in Denmark. Mm. This week, the artist known as Prince Midnight donated the toilet to Ripley Entertainment, headquartered in mm. Orlando. A spokesperson said the toilet is now in Ripley's warehouse in Central Florida, blah, blah, blah. It'll be shipped to the auditorium in Copenhagen. Uh, the toilet mm. works, to be clear. Uh, last year, it enjoyed a brief installment in the restroom of Brass Mug at <laughs> Tampa Bay Music Venue. Uh, I encourage you, if you're listening right now, to go into the show notes and just look at this thing. Can we see pictures? Uh, we can. Can we see pictures is a great question. Do I have the answer to that question for you? Let me see what I can do here. Give me one second. Uh, well, actually, it's still Oh, my way. word. Did you find it? Yeah, <laughs> I, can, I can just look at yeah, it. Yeah, pulling I'm it just, up is going to be too, too difficult. Yeah. But go look at the show That's notes. That's disturbing. It's there. Um, and just look at the posture there. Basically, uh, Mr. Ulrich in this situation is not doesn't appear to be wearing pants. <laughs> It would be as if you were sitting oh on my. his lap on the toilet. Oh, my. Uh, this is great radio. Uh, but that is a real thing that someone made. Um, I uh, can see where ooh. you might put the bidet on that, right? But um, it could be. <laughs> oh, there is yeah. a good spot for the bidet. Yeah, there's a great spot for that. So Yo, um, That is disgusting. That's, that's a not really even weird. a real that doesn't look like him. Who is going to do that? Let's go on to Ripley's, which is where, I mean, it was donated. No one paid money for this. So that's the good news. Uh, y'all can, can I just point out the, the fact of the other stuff? Right. <laughs> Look at the back. Here. Yeah. There's a, a lot of interesting <laughs> paraphernalia back there's like, there. <laughs> there's a giant stuffed tiger. Yep. There's a half a man that's doing a handstand. I think that's a Batman costume. Uh, uh, there's a, a wall of skulls. It's like shrunken heads or something, almost, what it looks yeah. like. Yeah, like a wall of faces or something, yeah. Y'all. <laughs> it's like an ATV-looking thing. It's Who weird. knows what that is? It's weird. Y'all. Yeah. And it looks like a giant uh, KFC bucket of chicken. Oh. And then there's like I'm a big, big old needle behind. Oh, uh, yeah, it looks like a giant right needle. There. Yeah. <laughs> you know they're like thanks I, we appreciate that <laughs> you know wow <laughs> the next thing you're gonna see you're gonna see that in the bathroom of the gold's gym next to the 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 massagers oh yeah there you so go i, I want to know what lars thinks of this because oh, that looks awful he's a pretty awesome looking look like guy but it's got his name right. on it for the most part i mm. I'd just be curious about that you know He's sure. an old man now. Maybe he won't be offended by it, but that's the kind of thing that would really tick him off. Yeah. <laughs> mm. The only thing that would make that better if it said sponsored by Napster. <laughs> yeah. All right. uh, is that, I don't know. Maybe is that they the last... put pants on him on that thing. 
Yeah, that's it for tonight. That's our wacky Dude. news. You need yeah. to put some pants on. Mm. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much. So next week we are off. Uh, Producer Brian is out of town. I have got a awards banquet I've got to go to. And then uh, the 14th, we will be back. Um, we are starting a new series on In the Pursuit of Race Relations. We've got Wendy McConnell. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to tell you all, you're going to need to buckle up, Buttercup. Uh, all you people that um, might get offended, there might be some people that get offended by this. That's okay. I just want to prep you guys by saying we're all about just learning, education, different points of view. It's all okay. Just like Will Smith. You can be a fan and not completely agree with things. We're here to have dialogue, just like the whole deconstructing church. We're here just to have dialogue. So you may or may not agree with everything. It's okay. But we're going to, you know, talk about this kind of stuff. And I think it's important to talk about it. So we got four weeks, really good stuff. Um, so just tune in. You may have to, to crit, you know, bite your teeth, but get through it, listen to it because it will. It'll be good stuff. It'll be good things that you need to think about. At least mull it over in your head. We can have discussions. We can, you know, you can talk to us, email us, whatever have you. If you want to, you know, talk things out, I'd be glad to. But um, yeah, just just to give you guys a heads up. Have you seen the thing around uh, going on TikTok that says, uh, "What's your least favorite race?" Um, I I think I have. Yeah, the consensus is it's like the 400 relay uh, yeah. marathon thing. You, yeah, My least favorite race is when I'm trying to race myself to the bathroom and I'm <laughs> up against my, my colon. Mm. That's a really bad race. Yeah. Because I usually lose. Race against time. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's, it's rough. So, but anyway, it, it's going to be great stuff. We've got some great guests, so. Uh, be prepared for that and then after that we're going to talk about mental health take a little bit of a a break on funny things um (laughs) so so we've got those two series coming up so we got great guests for those as well so buckle up buttercup we're on a journey and uh, we'll be glad to, to dialogue with you on those things so again thank you guys for tuning in so much to the southern fried philosophy podcast and as always keep looking up